Welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name's Glenn and today I'm joined by James from FileMaker Inc. James, tell us a little bit about what is FileMaker Inc? So FileMaker Inc provides a platform for developers to develop their solutions. The goal for, for us is to give them one chance to develop a solution and deploy anywhere. All right, and what's the typical customer for FileMaker? Um, typical customers are small, medium-sized customers, although we have some large customers as well. FileMaker has a server deployed on Mac or Windows. So what happens is we have a Draco database engine. On top of it, we have a service layer and a web layer. And then we also store the database file and the configuration file on the same machine. Right. So that's typically today's configuration. And for that SMB customer base, you must have been getting some feedback around how they found management. Correct. So basically for SMB customers, they face the challenge because they need some IT knowledge and skills to manage the server. And make sure it's backed up, protected, exactly. et cetera. And so more recently, you've been deploying FileMaker into the AWS platform. I just want to draw up how you're doing that in sure. the marketplace. So what happened is that when we look at AWS services, we wanted to make sure that we anchor on IAS Titri so that we don't reinvent the wheel. So what happened is that we moved it to AWS. The first thing say, OK, our Draco engine needs to be sitting on top of a Linux server. So this is just an EC2 instance running a Linux image with That's your... Right. That's right. So then we look at the services. We say, OK, AWS has a lot of services. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. So for example, the SES service right, and other services, we're actually automatically picking up those services and integrate with our database server. OK. And then outside of that, where are you storing the things that the database file and the config? So what happened is we move it to the cloud and say, hey, there is a chance for us to move the database file and the configuration file to EBS volumes. And within the EBS volume, we actually can dynamically bind these volumes to the instances we have. So this is the EC2, and we dynamically bind everything together. So make that one a flexible configuration. OK, and when you're deploying this, so the customer, you know, they've got their AWS account, they click on the AWS Marketplace. Uh, using CloudFormation to deploy this, set up VPC, security groups, you know, all the things you need around to make this a secure uh, platform. Exactly. So what happened is we leverage the CloudFormation to automate everything from, from the installation, deployment, to configuration. Mm -hmm. So customers do not need to do anything except typing their host name. Right, that makes and it pretty the easy. the rest of them will be configured. OK. And one more thing we, we actually take advantage of the IAS that customers can have a button called, we call it upgrade button. So what happens is they push this button. They can say, I can upgrade my instance to large instance or downgrade it to a small instance, depends on my volume. And what happens is we leverage the cloud formation to spin up or down these instances in five, six minutes. Everything is done. So just walk us through. So when they click on that button, I mean, how are you dealing with things like you know, the content that's in the database and config? Just in a little bit more detail. What actually happens right. when they hit so that button? When, when you click this upgrade button, what happens is we pause the database, detach this volume, mm -hmm. and replace this small instance with a bigger instance, and then retach the whole volume into the new instance. The whole process takes about five, six minutes. Right, and that's all hidden from the customer. So Anna's flower shop, they're not worrying about the exactly. extra mechanical details happening behind. That's right. So the that's, that's why the uh, small, medium-sized uh, customers, they love this kind of uh, automation. Mm -hmm. And what does this mean for FileMaker Inc. in terms of now you know, deploying these out to all your customers and managing this uh, out there compared to the on-premise model? Um, the on-premise model actually needs, for example, upgrade. You need to install a new machine and move the data, it's taking like a, at least a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. And within the cloud, it's five to six minutes. Right. And so it's giving you greater control as well. And as you release new releases as well, this is making it easier for you to, for example, just give an AMI upgrade. Uh, exactly. So upgrade. What, what happened is that we have AMI upgrade. It's also a one button upgrade. Right. So we call it a one button service. And uh, you know, it's great from a customer point of view. What has that done for yourselves internally at FileMaker Inc. about you know, release management and the pace of development of your service? That's a really good question. So basically, with the IAS um, provided by AWS, the release cycles are really quick. It's normally taking us like a three, four months to develop a new version, and then we just deploy it through the AMI. Excellent. James, thank you very much. It's great to see FileMaker Inc. making things simpler for small business customers. Thank, thank you. you.